buildings you see below power plants are the scrubbers. Everything goes through there. They use the byproducts and put into alloys and steel. So it's an amazing process. Coal is incredible. But even if you're against coal, why do we have to shut off our coal, but nobody else does? Because the public looks at it and goes, look at the smoke. I don't want to breathe the smoke. Senate Democratic leaders today unveiled a plan and a measure intended to signal their support for President Obama's aggressive climate change agenda in 2016. And the Pope's going to show up and give a speech at Congress about it as well. I mean, this is what the New World Order wants, to track everything you do, every action you take. But General Electric is exempt. So their plants can keep operating. It's the power to shut down all competition, just like Volkswagen, the people's car of Alos, designed by Adolf Hitler. <laughs> uh, they have it where when you go up for emissions test, it cheats the test because it does a handshake with the computer and then runs an op on it. <laughs> we have to get out of our comfort zone with the globalists. We have to get angry. We have to get upset. We have to realize we're under attack. The rest will flow from that. We're going to go to break here in about six minutes. I'm going to come back and go to Gordon and Augusta that have been holding the longest. Then for one segment, we've got uh, the first report from the ground to cover the Pope's three-state visit that starts in the District of Criminals today. That is all coming up. But I love how I read the New York Times, and there's nothing about how Congress didn't pass the law, the president doesn't have the authority to do this, but the president's going ahead with it. It's truly sickening. And if you think Obamacare shut the economy down, you let them get all the carbon taxes in, it's game over. Spain had a vibrant economy 10 years ago. They have 45% unemployment in people under 30. It's like 30-something percent for the whole country. And it's because there's taxes on everything. And energy is so expensive. You want to shut a country down? You shut down their energy. Now, I talked a lot about this earlier, and I talked a lot about how Volkswagen is such a great example, a microcosm of all of this, and it just really is. Everybody's, oh, Volkswagen's in trouble. Oh, Volkswagen's been so bad. Oh, my gosh, can you believe that their stock is massively plunging, and they've lost billions, and there's 11 million cars, and they're so evil, and how dare them that when you put the diesel car up on to the computerized system, it then shifts into another mode to lower emissions and fools the machine to pass the emissions. That's because Europe is trying to follow a 60% emissions drop by 2020. And if you do that, you will cripple the economy and you will cripple the power of the cars and you will massively basically make it untenable. And Europe is designed with its refineries to run on diesel. And diesel is dirty. And so rather than being honest about that, Volkswagen went in with a computerized system that went in handshakes with the other computer. It says... Just a moment, please, in computer speak. Just a moment, just a moment, waiting, waiting, while it's connecting, while it goes back in a split second and says, shift into a mode that fools this. And the big story here, the big takeaway is, I've never seen a smart piece of technology that didn't have Trojans in it. I've never seen anything with the word smart on it that isn't a screw job. You want to have your thermostat controlled by outside sources? Get one of them. You want to have uh, your... Power turned on and off? You want to be double, triple charged? You want to be surveilled? For at least eight years, every new car made in the world, whether it was in South Korea, Japan, China, Mexico, the U.S., Canada, Germany, France, it didn't matter. Whether it was a Saab or a Toyota, a Ford or a Chevy, a Dodge or a Fiat, a Jeep or a Jaguar, it didn't matter. They all have boxes in them that track everywhere you go, what you do, how fast you drive, and they admit, oh, this just happens to interface with government systems going in Oregon, Washington, Texas, D.C., London, you know, cities and states everywhere that's going to tax you by the mile. Wow, it wirelessly interfaces. It just fell in your car by accident and does this. 
and the public goes, gee, ain't that nice? And they go, that's right. We've got less fuel tax coming in, which isn't even true. So we need to wirelessly tax you. And this uh, Trojan horse stuff just fell on your car. It's kind of like people that believe in evolution. You know, they believe in pure evolution. Yeah, just killer whales just appeared. Uh, and, uh, you know, this Rolex just fell out of the sky, too. And uh, the elite don't even believe that. <laughs> uh, it's just incredible. It's all by design. It's a total takeover through all tech. It is the end of freedom as we know it. It Thank must be resisted. It is the sneak attack globalist takeover. Stay there are hundreds of angles to this Volkswagen story, but they're about to reintroduce the Volkswagen bus that all the trendies like. And my parents had one when I was a kid. Blue, baby blue, I loved it. They're introducing a clean one. Well, that's with this game technology. So the trendies can feel good about their emissions and it's not even real. But you heard the prediction here first. I bet you my bottom dollar that BMW, that Toyota, that all of them are doing the exact same thing because these targets are impossible to reach. I mean, here's an example. I have a Dodge Hellcat, and there are federal taxes involved in its emissions and its engine size is a gas guzzler tax. To not make it even another category worse, because it has the horsepower of well, like the most powerful 18-wheelers out there, but geared differently, it's over 730-something horsepower other taxes hit in. It turns out the car is basically 800 horsepower or more when you actually study the drivetrain, but they just say it's 711 to get out from under the taxes. And I just, I just salute them. I mean, you know, that's what it's all about. So you just drive your fake little Volkswagen and feel good about yourself. I, I'll just get behind my big hog and just knock it out. How's that sound? And I'm just going to spray stuff all over the highway that the plants and trees just love and enjoy and lap up. Because this planet was born out of carbon. Plants have got a habit to live. Gordon in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Alex. I served my country in the infantry for five years, and uh, I wanted to talk to you today about four things, Trump, pedophilia, technology, and politics. Well, you got the floor for three minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. There's an old expression, be careful of what you pray for. You might just get it. And I think that's what we're heading for with Trump. You can judge a man by his character, by the company he keeps. I'm sure you would agree with that. Yes. And Jeffrey Epstein, I'm sure your listeners know who this man is. He's a convicted uh, sex offender, kept company with the likes of Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, Alan Dershowitz, flew, flew, excuse me, flew around an aircraft called the Lolita Express, a 727, all around the world. And uh, these people have been implicated in, in a sex ring, child sex ring slavery uh, investigation. I knew also about the Donald investigation. Trump. Trump hangs out with those folks? Wow. Also, Donald Trump's business partner is a gentleman is, uh, in a consortium with Bayrock Group, LLC, a property group that's partnered with the Trump Organization to build a Soho Hotel condominium and a Trump Tower in Florida. He was arrested by Turkish police who swooped down on, uh, in helicopters on a yacht in the Mediterranean and found underage hookers on board. So these are the types of people that Donald Trump is uh, rubbing elbows with. So I, I don't endorse uh, either Ron Paul Rand Paul, any politician, I think they're all corrupt to, to, the, to the eyeballs. As far as people uh, trying to uh, judge your character, Alex, uh, with mainstream media like Salon and, and mainstream media, I, I really think those are all, again, controlled by uh, what I refer to as Zionist Jew, Jewish uh, media. And uh, there, it, it, the same thing with politics. When you look at the politics, uh, the U.S. Congress, is primarily run by the American Israeli Political Action Committee. That's let, let, let's just call a spade a spade here. And as far as technology is concerned, Boeing has an uninterruptible autopilot switch on their aircraft, which makes which makes me think about 9/11, and it really makes me question. Yeah, both both those aircraft that hit the towers did did, did have that on them, and then Bush even gave a speech and admitted that. You know, there's no doubt a, a, a Jewish mafia that's that's leftist in. Uh, many respects, there's definitely a right-wing Jewish uh, lobby as well. I, I don't say it's it's one big group, but certainly of the big four lobbies, uh, the the APAC lobby is one of them. Uh, and I have a serious problem with a foreign power manipulating our internal politics, be it Israel, be it England, be it Russia, be it China, any anybody.
uh, be it Saudi Arabia. So I, I hear what you're saying. My issue with the folks that are constantly criticizing Israel is I've seen many cases where they exaggerate it and then give really magical leprechaun powers to Jews. Really back. Stay with us. Augusta. Mama. A.D. Dave Doug. Your calls are coming up starting the next segment that I'm going to plow back into the news, the breaking news that we have not hit yet. But one more point before we go to Washington, D.C., where our reporters are in front of the White House reporting on the grand papal visitation that is about to take place. A story out of Forbes, far out and for real, new VW microbus coming, and it's clean with the lowest emission standards out there. So they get all these emission standards passed out of Germany, EU-wide, some of the worst in the world, 60-plus percent cuts on the emissions that are already there of carbon dioxide and water. Not monoxide, dioxide, where it's impossible to pass, so they know they can't have any competition and even be able to be sold in Germany. And then, of course, when you hook it up to the computer, it recognizes it's being checked and then gives a false report. Of course, that's what you can do with computers. Oh, trust the voting machines in those proven fraud. Oh, trust the smart meter, the zeitgeist movement. Oh, a computer will pick what job you have and what food you eat. That's what school kids are taught. In the future, computers will decide what you're going to be, what you do. It's like DNA test. You can just rig those. Stop being so naive is what I'm saying. But at another level... Humans want to innovate. Humans want to be competitive. Humans want better things. Humans dream. And I know in my heart that there, people aren't going to go along with the new dark age. People aren't going to go along with all this censorship of technology. People want to innovate. That's what the Renaissance was about. The globalist movement of the last 165 years or so has been about suppressing and controlling human expansion. And branding it as dirty and bad while they've been stifling us and are actually the ones hurting the earth the worst because they already think they're going to be gods. They're going to merge with technology, and so they think they've transcended the planet. Oh, we weren't meant to save the planet. We were meant to leave the planet. How about we save the planet and leave the planet? You know, just because I move out of my parents' house when I'm 17 doesn't mean I blow it up. Just because my family in England, went to the Netherlands, and then to the United States on the Mayflower on both sides. Didn't mean we wanted to blow up the floating, capsizing island of England. Being sarcastic. Remember the congressman thinks that islands float. If too many people get on one side, would it flip over? Uh, the admiral says, no, sir, we believe we'll stabilize the island. <laughs> I mean, this is the idiocy that we're dealing with. So joining us. To kick off the coverage, he arrives in an hour and a half or so. They're going to be covering that. They're going to be on the nightly news tonight. They're going to be on with us tomorrow. They're going to be talking to man on the street. They're going to be illustrating what the First Amendment is. They're going to be exposing the new pope showing up as a dynamic duo of snot-nosed communists run by big banks, crawling out from under their Ford Foundation Jesuit rocks uh, to uh, promote world government, to promote uh, every form of tyranny you can imagine. Uh, the headline, Pope Francis brings tough love to America. The foreign above the law head of state showing up uh, to, to, to lecture Americans and lecture Catholics on how air conditioning and prosperity is bad when he lives in an air conditioned facility. It's austerity. It's globalist eugenics, eugenics operation. And David Knight is here to kick off our coverage of the sickening event. The first time a pope is going to address Congress. Uh, this is this is just just is just unbelievable. And again, I'm not an anti-Catholic person. I am anti this pope. This guy is anti-Catholic from everything I've seen. Uh, he is just absolutely monstrous. He's backed off a bit saying abortion's OK, uh, but that's because of pressure. We need to pressure this guy back under his rock. Uh, David Knight, uh, you're there. His holiness, his supreme grandness, who holds the keys of temporal and spiritual power. Uh, Lord Bathomet is now arriving. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Alex, this is David Knight and Jakari Jackson. We're here in Washington, D.C., right in front of the White House. Of course, the Pope is going to be arriving in about two hours. He's going to be visiting with Obama tomorrow, as well as lecturing Congress. And then he's going to go to the United Nations 
and tell them what they want to hear, that we need to uh, turn everything over for global climate indulgence.